Okay, I'm uh, starting to work on the calibration uh, constants, and in order to restore them, you have to go through the cal procedures in the book. And you can find them in section 5, as you can see right here, and they start on page 5-1. Uh, the book they're in, and I'll show that here to you in a second. This is the book they're in. Uh, it's the uh, 2465, or... 2467 Bravo uh, there's the part number for the book right there and if you go down to the next page um, you can see this book was written in 1988 somewhere in here oh, there it is 1988 I don't know the exact uh, month and day of it but that's the one it is <clears throat> so anyways we're gonna go down to uh, section 5 which is the adjustments Come on, here we go. And we'll just hit the introduction. This is where we were at before. Right here. It talks about partial procedures. Uh, basically, don't do them unless you know that the uh, cow adjustments uh, were properly done or are still good. Since mine are completely wiped, I have to go through all of these. Uh, the interesting thing is, is in the uh, uh, cow procedure, after you do the voltages and in your initial setups right here, um, they actually jump into Cal 8 before they jump into the other ones. And then in Cal 8, there is actually two. There's one for the 2467, and there's one for the 2465. But the 2467 comes before the 2465, so I made a mistake, and I actually uh, did this one, and then I went and did, wanted to do this one. I was like, wait a minute. So don't make that mistake. Make sure you go down to the right page, and on the top of the page it'll show you. So, but this one is about uh, setting up the voltages before you even get into the cow. And here's just a, a quick preview of some of the stuff you have to go through. You have to adjust the voltages and the DAC. And the voltages, there's actually only one that you do, and that's the 10 volt right here. And there's a reference. You can see the tolerances are 0 0.01 plus or minus 0 0.01. It's pretty tight. And then everything is taken off of this volt, that, that 10 voltage right there as a reference. So when you get one adjustment, <clears throat> then you get down to your uh, uh, CRT adjustments and your, uh, your grid drives and stuff. Now notice at the top of the page right here, it says 2467. So if you got a 2465 Bravo, don't do this one. You need to go down several pages until you get to that one. Let me keep going down here. There it is. So this is the uh, adjustment grid bias. And notice the pot number is different too. So just to let you know where it's at. All right, let's get back up here to uh, the voltages and we're gonna go from there. And uh, I've already done them and I did a video. This is just like a little preview. There we go. We're basically going to go down here and we're going to check the voltages and we're going to check the, uh, the ripple and the uh, frequency. And uh, so, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, we're here on uh, page, I believe, 5 2. Notice I wrote in writing there the 20 minute warm up. And you really do need to do that. You got to make sure everything's stable and stuff. Uh, here's your voltage reference adjustment pot, it's a R1292, right there in that little hole. You'll need a plastic tweaker for that. And I'm going to go ahead and set the scope up here. And I'm going to show you where the uh, test point is for it. It's on uh, J119 on the A1 board. It's right here in the, the bottom here. You don't have to go right to the frame. You can actually go to pin 7 on that jack and that's that's basically to ground and i chose it since that is the actual ground clean on the uh, uh, a1 board where all the voltages are going to be referenced to anyways you know while it's actually running so i chose that and i didn't really show you where it was at in the uh, parts placement and uh, this is on page 1053 in your manual or uh, 450 456 somewhere in there in the pdf depending on the version uh, one of the things I wanted to do, do talk about is uh, the manuals. 
uh, while while you watch me take these voltages here is some of the manuals are really pretty good copies and some of them aren't really good at all and what I mean by that I mean they're usable but they're not really good at all a lot of them uh, they'll chop off like chapter 5 or they'll they'll just totally delete it it won't even be in there on the PDF copy or you'll end up with a copy that's missing like chapter 10 the diagrams and schematics uh, you know so it's it's really kind of a pain in the butt to go searching around for manuals that may or may not be really that useful to you now, the other thing is is that some of the copies even though they're complete manuals including chapter 10 or some of the options etc when they made the copy a lot of these schematics are 25 and a half inches long and 11 inches high so some guys they don't make a full copy of the whole page they cut it off on the right edge there's actually some serial numbers there that tell you that this diagram or this schematic applies to your serial number and some of the guys have made the copies and <laughs> they left that portion off when they scanned it and that's an important piece of information there uh, you can usually you can figure it out by looking on the left there'll be a, a little section that'll say you know for serial number B05000 and above or for serial number B049000 blah blah and below and that's you know you you can usually figure it out but it's you know if it's not marked you could end up in a little bit of trouble there and repeating some steps Uh, the other thing is, is when I was doing this uh, measurements and stuff, doing the ripple, is I had a problem really getting to understand or, or see the frequency in there. So I kind of chopped it up between uh, peak to peak and then for the, the, the big spikes in, in the voltages. And then I uh, looked at the the main bright area in the middle is, is the middle ripple and I couldn't really pick the frequency out very well now, the other thing is is the middle area ripple wasn't always within specs according to what's the book but I know for a fact that this scope had passed before um, in many areas and still operates fine it's just that it's out of tolerance uh, grossly out of tolerance in some areas and I don't really think that the the fine ripple has that much of an effect on it. I think it's the fact that when I changed a U, I think it was 2460 um, when I pulled that chip out it was no longer connected to a battery and the cal constants were gone so any useful cal constants in there <laughs> that I could have saved and just maybe done cal 1 or cal 3 or whatever in the book if, if you follow along in the series you'll know what I'm saying uh, the, <laughs> If there was any useful ones left, they're all gone now. So, uh, in order to repair this scope, I'm going to have to go through all the cows, uh, cow one through cow nine, and that's listed in chapter five. Right after, pretty much right after this, you do this, you'll do your CRT adjustments and uh, your focus adjustments, etc. When you get past that, uh, it goes straight into cow eight, <laughs> and then it goes uh, into Cal 1 through 7 and then it skips 8 and then goes to Cal 9. It's, it's kind of weird the way to set it up. And uh, reading a blog I noticed that when you get to Cal, um, I think it's Cal 9 or Cal 7. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, the book actually has you when you complete that to go ahead and push the A, B and get out. And from what I understand from the blog that's not correct. What you need to do is you need to keep pushing the the upper uh, coupler uh, button for the trigger and let it walk itself out if you don't what will happen is it won't save the cal settings and then all your work and all the stuff you've done is basically for naught 
Uh, the other thing is, is that when you start doing this, from what I understand, is you have to, doing the cow things, you have to go all the way through the steps through one powered up session. If you don't go through the one powered up session, when you turn it off, it may or may not sell, save the cow constants for that section there. So the, this is just things that I've kind of learned about this that's out there, but you really got to do some digging for it. So I decided to go ahead and, and put all this into one, one spot if I can. Uh, I don't know if the boss is going to let me go through all of this um, and document it or not. But if, if he does, great, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, do this. If not, uh, I have a 2445 Bravo, and the procedures are almost exactly the same. And they're the same family of scope, and if, uh, when I get time and I get the, a good enough test equipment at, at home in my hobby bench, then maybe I can do that if, if I don't end up clearing this. But. Anyways, uh, here's one of the situations here with the ripple I, I was talking about. You know, the, the ripple is really low there. And if you blow this up to where you can see, you know, the max peak to peak to kind of get it, then you'll notice it here it's, it's about one and a half, almost two, two millivolts uh, for the center ripple. And that, according to the spec, from what I understand, would be out of spec so I mean, you guys with any experience let me know if I'm wrong or if I'm right or how to actually test it um, I'm using the the probe they asked me to use so well, anyways uh, this is pretty much getting towards the end of it I did put quite a bit of time into doing this editing it researching and some information so if you appreciate that uh, by all means please give me a thumbs up here and if you want to help my channel go ahead and subscribe and most of all, if you see something I can do better on this, or, you know, give some information to the community watching it, please go ahead and comment, either private or otherwise. God bless you. Y'all have a good one. And Keith Nunn, you out.